Blade Runner 2049 seemed like a surefire hit, with two Hollywood favorites sharing the lead, tons of critical praise, and a respectable box office forecast. However, the long-awaited sequel brought in just $31.5 million on opening weekend, which is a pretty dismal return compared to its $150 million production budget. So why did this film fizzle out in the theaters? Let's take a look at what went wrong with Blade Runner 2049. Runtime Blade Runner 2049 comes in at a whopping 163 minutes, which seems to have been just long enough to dissuade casual viewers from a trip to the theater. While sci-fi fans might still be willing to spend that much time with the movie, those just looking for a fun time would probably be more in the mood for something a bit on the shorter side. Not only that, but the number of showings each theater can host per day is significantly lessened by its length, which can lead to a loss of revenue. Overall, when it comes to movies, longer isn't always better. Sequel Slope Hollywood's all about reboots and sequels, but usually the underlying property is something that was successful the first time around. While 1982's Blade Runner has since amassed an intense cult following, it's easy to forget that it didn't actually perform very well during its brief theatrical run. Overshadowed by E.T. the Extraterrestrial, the film stayed in theaters for just five weeks and earned only $32.9 million, which is about $82 million if you adjust for inflation. And not only was the first film only mildly popular upon release, but there's since been several different cuts released on video and DVD, like the final cut released in 2007. All those cuts are confusing to casual fans and meant those potential moviegoers for 2049 had to decide between watching one of at least three different versions of the original before heading out to the theater. And that's a whole lot of homework, especially for a weekend. Bloated Budget Given the lackluster initial interest in the original, it was a risky move for Warner Brothers to invest so much capital in the sequel 25 years later. 1982's Blade Runner was made on a big budget for its time, costing a reported $30 million to make, which translates to about $76 million today. But Blade Runner 2049 is estimated to have cost twice that amount, after tax rebates. It might have allowed for gorgeous visuals and all, but it was also a risky investment for a movie that was 25 years overdue, and leaning on a property that wasn't a financial runaway to begin with. Vague Marketing one common thread among recent box office flops is marketing that focuses on visuals over substance. Thanks to big bombs like Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets and Ghost in the Shell, audiences have grown wary of bad films being disguised with sweeping camera shots and a big budget. While this didn't end up being the case with Blade Runner 2049, the trailers might not have drummed as much buzz as they could have, thanks to how they highlight the movie's looks over its plot. Of course, the entire plot of the movie itself was a spoiler. But keeping details under wraps did them no favors in terms of bringing in viewers unfamiliar with the source material. Too many questions. Too faithful. There's a lot of complicated mythology at play in the Blade Runner films. Many fans and critics were delightfully surprised to see how well the sequel dealt with it, with the film answering and expanding on some of the deeper questions asked in the original. However, that type of introspection and that deep connection to the mythology makes it daunting for the unconverted. The mythos of Blade Runner is so deep and complicated that it can keep casual viewers at arm's length, and 2049 may have stuck too close to the source material to have the kind of mass appeal it was aiming for. Intense Competition Blade Runner 2049 had trouble attracting young audiences, and that may be in part thanks to its R rating. After years of shying away from adult-oriented fare, studios have been more willing to embrace it lately. In fact, it seems like those films have started flooding the marketplace. But 2049 had to stand up against R-rated competition like the still-popular It, American Assassin, and Kingsman The Golden Circle, all of which were much easier to digest than Blade Runner. Going for a less strict rating would have helped to cut out some of the competition, and likely wouldn't have seriously cut into the film's quality, considering the movie is fairly tame for its R rating. What now? Blade Runner 2049, like many a domestic flop, now turns to the international box office for salvation. The movie brought in $50.2 million overseas during its debut, just about on par with expectations, although not enough to make up for its domestic failure. The movie's biggest hope lies in Asian market releases, which come later in October and November. Nations like South Korea and China are more friendly to movies with big-budget visuals, so if the film was able to bring in big bucks overseas, it could still be profitable. And while Hollywood is a business, even if the film's receipts aren't as strong as the studio might have hoped, the movie definitely has cult-favorite potential, just like its predecessor. So who knows, we might just be seeing a third Blade Runner installment drop in another 25 years. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.